The Mark III Astra CDX Estate, the once driven forever smitten forgotten project car. Now, my logic for buying this car was questionable at best. I'm not even really sure why I wanted it. Uh, apart from the seats. You see, this particular CDX was equipped with the rare option of the heated leather interior. And curiously, if you ticked this box, you didn't just get the regular seats trimmed in leather, you got a unique set of sports front seats, and they're very impressive. Logic would have dictated that the Sport got a leather option, but it didn't. And initially for the 1996 model year, the Sport was available with the 1.8 16-valve, 115-horsepower engine only, with the CDX receiving the 136-brake 2.0-litre. Gas shock absorbers were made standard right across the whole Mark III Astra range for the big 1995 facelift, but the Sport didn't receive stiffer springs, only a close-ratio gearbox. The Sport CDX has the wide-ratio F18, but, if you chose the 1.6 16-valve version of the CDX, it would have a close ratio gearbox, as would all the other 1.6 16-valves in the range at that time, which is a bit weird. Now, of course, there was a 4-speed automatic option for both petrol engines on the CDX, and that's what our car happens to be fitted with. Now, all the Mark III Astro model range is vast, and at times it makes no sense at all but it therefore makes it surprisingly interesting. They chopped and changed models constantly throughout the run of the car from 1992 to 1998, and a lot of it came down to the car theft epidemic that began in the late 80s and peaked in the early 90s. All these new high-performance cars rarely had any sort of security on them, so cars were being stolen complete to be given new identities, and then sold on again complete, stripped for parts, or straight up joyridden. Premiums went through the roof, some cars became totally uninsurable in parts of the country, and something had to give. Hot hatches from all manufacturers were cooled down, and iconic badges and trim levels that marked cars out as high performance versions were altered to become more insurance friendly. As the mobiliser technology improved, things calmed down later in the decade, but for a few years, anything with SRI, GSI, GTE, it was bad news to the trade. There's a video going to follow in detail about all of this. Uh, if I tried to get it all into the video now, we'd be here all day. Returning to our car, it certainly is a bit of an oddball. Was it specced up by some old chap upon his retirement? It's a risky car for a dealer to put out as a demonstrator, or there wouldn't exactly be many queuing up for it. A small, opulent, automatic estate finished in titanium pearlescent, which is gold to the rest of us. It had latterly been grinding away, racking up a fair amount of miles as a daily driver, and it was being maintained, but certainly not loved. It was on eBay in January of 2022, and that was when I had Fab, the Omega, and the recently repaired Vectra on the road. I did some uh, justifications in my head about how good it'd be to have a comfy little self-shifting load lugger, and with a cost of living crisis upon us, I thought it would be good to have something with a smaller engine, like a 1.6. But to be honest, I just wanted it for those funky sports seats. Unfortunately, with them being so rare, some other people had spotted the car as well, and I ended up getting into a bit of a bidding war, and ended up paying, I think, about £900 for it, maybe a little more. Sight unseen, but the seller eulogised about its reliability, um, and um, I decided to take a chance on it. Uh, oh, and it was down near Brighton, so it was well over 900 miles in total there and back in one day. And there were complications. I chose to take the Vectra as that had the tow bar electrics for the A-frame. Fab had that as well, but I gutted the electrics for the Cannonball Run fuel tank and never put it back in. And I decided I did want to take the A-frame should we break down. On the way south, the Vectra would only do 24 miles per gallon. 
I fixed the air intakes to temp sensor at Preston which had a broken wire but that didn't help and it turned out to be a bad lambda sensor. The car didn't break down but 23 to 24 miles per gallon over 900 miles when you were expecting the high 30s made the run a tad more costly. We got to the car just as the light was beginning to fade and at the final moment when I was about to leave the seller casually mentioned that I had a water leak from inside the car but it was okay if you didn't have the heaters on. Oh, nice one. It turned out it didn't have any heaters anyway and I had to depend on cycling the heated seats for a tiny bit of warmth in the drive home, which was in minus temperatures by the time we got to Scotland. Oh, and uh, the radio didn't work to top things off. Kenzo was mortified at the total distance, but I contend that that's his own fault for not consulting a map before agreeing to assist on the journey. He at least had roaring hot heaters in the Vectra of which I opted to make the fuel economy even more excruciating on by risking pushing the Astra quite hard all, all the way home, hovering around the 90 mark most of the way, and to be fair it made it back just fine, although it was feckin' Baltic all the way north of Preston. Once I got the car back, I looked into how to get it usable. It was MOT'd for 10 months, and it turned out the heater matrix was leaking. Now that wouldn't normally be a big problem, but with it being an aircon car, as far as I could tell, the entire dash had to come out to replace it, plus getting hold of such a heater matrix wasn't exactly easy. Plus, it was exhibiting symptoms of head gasket failure, uh, because there wasn't any heat coming through the vents either. Um, aside from that, I didn't really like the way it drove. It had a crashing hard ride, inert handling, a clunky auto box, and there was a lot of road noise off it, which was surprising with it being a CDX. Okay, it's a P-Reg Astra estate with 160,000 miles, but it wasn't tired, it was shagged out. I'd had a Belmont uh, LXI estate in the past, and it was so much nicer than this. My crush on those front seats had blinded me to the fact that this car was in fact a bit pish. The final skid mark in the hill figures was when the auto box selector thingamabob seized up. That bit in the top of the box that moves when you pull the lever into P, R, N and D was all corroded. Uh, I tried to um, get it working again and the best I could do to fix it uh, ultimately uh, was uh, to pop the bonnet and manually select park to get it to start. It would never go into gear again after that. Not properly anyway. Uh, so 9 times out of 10 this car has had it, but this is one's driven forever smitten so a cunning plan was immediately thought of for like a bit and then I went off to do some other stuff. The Astra became a handy mobile storage unit and to give it its due it's done very well starting and shunting in and out of the unit each day so other cars could be worked on. Then one day the head gasket issue must have come to a climax. It must have been sending exhaust gas into the coolant, hence the reason we weren't getting any heat through it because there was no water in the matrix. And that was all pressurising the system and I think uh, that's why one day when left idling to charge the battery there was a large explosion, a huge cloud of steam and the entire end of the radiator had blown apart. And so there it sat uh, as I bought the Corsa GLS 1.4, the Cavalier Diplomat, Le Cav from France, the Saab 950, the Cadillac BLS, the Corsa CDX Automatic arrived uh, as well as our Cavalier CD fab was rebuilt and then written off very quickly either. I was in need of some inspiration as to what to do with the Astra and lo and behold in a scrapyard in Accrington sat festering in a corner for over five years was a 1995 Embridge Cavalier CDX 2 litre 16 valve Ecotec. This is a car equipped with air conditioning and a light bulb went on over my head because at that moment I knew that I could convert the Astra from a 1.6 automatic to a 2 litre 16 valve manual while also keeping the air conditioning. We found a lot of documents in the glove box of the Scrap Cavalier and discovered the engine had just rolled over 100,000 miles. It had a red mark on the cam cover to denote that it was a non-runner, but I wasn't too worried about that as it wasn't locked up. I ended up removing the engine, the box, 
the heater box assembly from behind the dash which crucially included the same type of heater matrix as the Astra would need and a whole load of other gubbins. Annoyingly though, the key chip and ECU were missing for the engine which would come into play later. So now my plan was go from 1.6 auto to 2 litre manual retaining the air conditioning. I packed all the stuff in the Omega, headed home and made plans. At one point it was getting converted to full pre-facelift spec, painted solar yellow like a Calibra SE2 and converted to 5 stud. I've since decided to keep it a bit more simple and retain the original paint and wheels, but I have gathered up a nice pile of parts for it. New KYB gas shocks for the front, Monroe's for the rear, new OEM springs and new front strut tops. I've also got new wheel bearings as I will need to upgrade the fronts for the big block hubs. I also got a head gasket set, a timing belt kit, a clutch, as well as a mint Vectra B SRI 153 spoke leather airbag wheel. As the Astra has the rare option of twin airbags, I decided to go with an airbag wheel rather than the usual solution, which is to replace the standard bulbous wheel with the early one found in J&K Reg cars, as well as some late vans, albeit in non-leather version. The video here picks up with some of the work done last year on the engine and then jumps to the present day where I've just pulled the dash out. But before we get to that, once again we need to go back to 2022 and the purchase of a certain red Astra Sport 2 litre 16 valve which would prove to be rather important to the build of our CDX as you're about to find out. Ah, she's good actually using the Omega as a proper tow car. I've only used it once before to run scrap up the road. But this is what it was originally bought for with old boy tow caravans. Uh, with the short gearing, it's uh, absolutely spot on for the job. There we go, we've got this lovely Astra. 50 shades of flame red, bit of pink. There's the Astro Sport coming ready to get out of the garage today. We we'll dig you what we bought it yesterday. Alright, <laughs> there's various wiring plugs that have been cut out the engine and there's bits missing. Next thing we're going to do is put a starter motor in it. And then if we put a battery on it, then we should see if it will turn over. Uh, I need to go and get some petrol for it. And that's about as far as we can go, because it also needs a radiator. Um, I'm going to have a look at the CDX wiring as well, because there's various plugs that have been cut, and I'm not sure what they are. Um, most of them are off the car side, I think. So I should be able to identify them off of um, maybe my car. The 1600 that's out there if necessary. Uh, I've just robbed the starter off my Ecotec engine because I've just discovered that the Ecotec starter is different to the 8 valve, 16 valve ones. Alright, that's my Ecotec starter motor installed temporarily. Yeah, we have petrol. And we're going to get the battery for the Nova. Right, that's the battery on tight. Right, I'm going to steal the coil pack out of that engine. What have we got? Okay, let's mark these up. Yes, it is. Okay, crank sensor's connected. See what happens. All right, try it. Uh, well, see if there's fuel coming out of it. 
We can check on the bleed screw. I think that's dry at the moment. I think we've sucked any fuel through. Go! Shaft it, all right. So. Okay, folks. So I'm on with Kenzo's Astra Sport two liter. He removed the Eco Tech. It's in a two liter sixteen valve put in it, which is from an Astra GSI. Right. Observe. I we've got two multi rib old belts that have been hanging up in the wall for ages. I'm going to use them to lift the engine with the crane because they seem to be able to do it no problem. And this is now like officially a thing. Although I want to know where that chain is. Here we go, it's going to lift it. Spot on, and then we get the gearbox off, and then once that's off and out of the way, I'll do the sump before we put the gearbox back on. Up, up and away. There we go. Whee hey hey! Sound. Okay, I've got the tools out, that is gearbox fucked off. Ideal, that's our sump gasket removed. Nice. That one's like super dirty. If you look in the end of that, see? There's some dirt. It's not completely blocked it off, but it'll have been diminishing the oil pick up to the top of the engine. And I'll show you. There's like a lot of sort of carboned up sludge under there as well, which is uh, an issue you get with these engines running EGR. Uh, I can see inside the sump there, there's a bit of gunk in yuck in the bottom so I'll do it good to get that all cleaned out anyway yeah I'll do good to get all this out of there before we fit the new gasket not even like corroded along there so that's good I don't need to put any sandpaper on anything or not old vox old sumps I've got a reputation for leaking so Right, so we've got, the, we've got this all cleaned up, and you see it's got nice clean bores on it, this engine. It's not had a hard life. The water jacket's cleaning it, it's not all full of rust, like it's not been run without coolant in it and everything. So we've got this all cleaned up now, so we can go and um, make sure that the head is clean on the underside. Uh, get the gasket to go fire, fire it all together. Now all we need to do now is a little 15. The difference is with 8 valve engines you do your 25 the same as this and then you do 3 90 degrees so they're like going down much tighter so these just get a little tweak Yeah so we've got our settings there, I've got it set to new so we hold that in position there, and then we just tighten this off. And that is our belt tensioned according to genuine Vauxhall specifications, or what have you. Right, that's our timing belt all on there. You can see we're timed up at the top. We're timed up at the bottom, he's not moved. Our tensioner's on. Lovely job. Another thing off the list. Where the hell's the alternator for this? That's what I want to know. Mm, interesting. Oh yeah, I've got the cam sensor to go in that as well. I need to remember that. He needs to get replaced. I've got a new one of those because they're notorious for failing. Anyway. Look at how clean that clutch is in this motor. Obviously done 104,000 miles. 
That says LUK GM on it. This is her clutch. Oh. Uh, uh, this has had a clutch on it. Um, okay, that's interesting. Obviously, I had to remove it to check it anyway, but we'll strip this end cover plate off. That's a genuine GM thing. Compare it against the, the one that I've got for it, which is a national, I think. Yeah, interesting. Right, so we are on with the strip down of the Astra CDX. Um, I need to remove the dash to get into the heater matrix because it's an aircon car. So I've just removed the wiper linkage assembly and all the wipers and everything because there's a set of 13mm bolts running along the top there that hold the dash in place. Well folks, as you can see, I have got the dash out the Astra. It's a fucking disaster area. Now, instead of 7mm bolts like on the Cavalier, this is all held in with five and a halfs, and half of them are missing, so somebody has already had a go at getting in here. And as you can see, there is coolant residing in there. Now, I need to get these pipes off of here, so I can detach the matrix itself. I really, really don't think I could get that without taking the dash out of it, honestly. So I shall continue um, trying to ease this out of here without breaking anything, which is easier said than done. Yeah, as you can see, managed to get the base off and it's full of coolant because this has been leaking. Now, do you just... These pipes should just be inserted in here and then they clip into place, so... Oh yeah, there's one coming now. Um, which is good because... Come on! Don't think I can do this one-handed. Hey! We have... An air conditioning heater matrix, which is the same as a Cavalier. Now, if I go in, make oh look, yeah, there we go. There's our leak there. It's got a little bit of um, moisture coming out that corner and some green on it, oh, and it's leaking coolant out it. Okay. Get the other one in. See, this is the matrix out the Cavalier CDX, and as we can see, it's bone dry in there, so this one will be good to go. So, thankfully, all the stuff is the same the way it installs. It was interesting that there was like three screws removed, so I think somebody's had a go at trying to get into that and realised that you can't get it out the bottom without um, removing the dash um, and giving up on it, so yeah. I shall go and reinstall this, and I'm going to use um, the seven mil screws that I've got, rather than those five and a half ones. I did manage to find a five and a half mil socket in the end, uh, but yeah, I'll use the um, correct screws for it, and at least the correct ones for a Cavalier. Another night, more slow progress. We have removed the automatic gear selector, four bolts and a wiring plug, easy. And then I had to go and remove this bunch of wiring, which went from the engine bay through the hole and the bulkhead, down there, where the gear lever will go through. I had to remove that. Um, I lost the plot and just cut the wiring plug off the end where the ECU was, because I don't care. Not necessary, but now we at least have the ability to run our gear lever. 
there's the ECU for the automatic which used to live up there there is our expansion valve for the aircon as well somebody told that failed on their Astra uh, so I've ordered a new one 25 quid off eBay and we'll get that before the dash goes back together but now at least I can go and insert a gear lever into here Way. Hey. well folks the engine is no longer installed in the 1600 automatic Astra just been shoving this load of wiring for the little box through here which was on a grommet because that's where our gear stick's going to come through and there's some of our air con pipe there joins onto the pipe there that runs around by the subframe looks like we're going to need a brake pipe there power steering pipes are in good order does need a new radiator looks like it is going to need uh, an accumulator for the air con that's gone porous that's probably one of the reasons why it's leaking not sure of the condition of the condenser itself that's probably like a tea bag as well but there is a 1600 automatic sitting there so I'll need to strip the automatic gearbox off it because uh, when it's getting sold the buyer isn't going to want that but uh, otherwise easy to remove look at how torturous the root of the intake is on these eh, to reduce the power mental anyway there's our 2 litre Ecotec sitting in the corner For my next trick, I'm going to remove the condenser, I've removed the accumulator dryer and that's about it, I've got parts on order from eBay um, new ones of those which will take time to arrive and I've got a new um, expansion valve as well and I'm just removing this piece of Ecotec pointlessness uh, but obviously I will need to go and put the horns back on because they are connected to that but we can get rid of this thing, which is something to do with Ecotec emissions. Can't remember, somebody will tell me what it is again, I can't mind. Right, that's the old aircon condenser removed. And, hmm, I think that's where it was leaking. <laughs> anyway, I need to get a new one of these ordered. I've managed to find one of these uh, in Germany for six quid, including the postage. Which is good, the condensers don't seem to come with them, so... That's handy, it just goes onto that bit of pipe work there. Condenser's held in with two 10mm bolts. Yeah, but it's, um, but might have been able to get away with take it without taking the bumper off, but... We can see now, we've got a good solid cross member in here. Let's say it is a car for the south of England. Uh, a bit closer now, I'm going to have to replace that brake pipe on this side, it's all rusted through. Now the other side, it runs along the bottom of the bulkhead there and I'll have to check the rest of them. And I think that'll do it for tonight. Ecotech junk! Right, we're on with the brake pipes now. There's the first bigger one and runs down there all the way along the back of the bulkhead up to the other side. And we've got the little sharp one at the front there to go in there. Once that's done, we to bolt the engine in place because there's nothing else in there that requires me to get to it. Oh, look at all that. Nice big pile of leaves. There's nothing else in here that requires my access. No. There we go, folks. It's got a gear lever. And of course, it's got a clutch pedal hiding down there. Also, what a horrendous mess. I've now got to go and get this dash back together and I've got to work out what's happened to the steering column because this end bit's pushed in there. I need to go and extract that back out again. Can't remember how I do that. Eh, oh, and I need to get an ignition switch because that one exploded. Great. So I'm really pleased that I managed to pick up this genuine GM back box cheap because for certain models they're selling money now. So hopefully it might lessen the racket a bit. I say that's our Sportex race tube there. And we'll have to put in a silence or maybe a little catalytic converter in there. Anything's legal, quieting it down, you know. Now, I do have a two inch silencer, but unfortunately it is oval shaped. Which means there isn't enough space for it to go through this tunnel here. Which means I'm going to probably have to go and get a round one of some description. And yeah. 
and obviously I should really put a little catalytic converter in there. I wonder if a catalytic converter would serve as any sort of silencer. One of those little uh, cheap sporty cat ones that just gets them through the MOT. Maybe, because that's where the cat pipe usually goes. But we're not going to have a cat pipe, we've just got a straight pipe joining these two together. I'm going to cut the end off this and join it. Yes, we shall see. Now here of course is our Ecotec engine, it's out a 1995 Cavalier CDX but it is running 1997 Astra Management and it's got the later type swirl flap manifold on it. This is our beautiful Ashley 4 branch manifold which gets rid of those EGR bits at the front should free up some power and this is a beautiful pipe they came with it with the flexi on it so we're going to cut this down and put sort of a cat silencer something in there to quieten it down a bit. Uh, this engine was uh, just turned over 100,000 miles and it had a new clutch put in it just before the Cavalier was scrapped due to rust. We've got the CDX's original F18 on there so see how it goes. <laughs> There we go folks, that didn't take too long. Two litre Ecotex installed. Obviously there's still a lot of work to do. We're waiting on a lot of parts from eBay to arrive. But that's it, bolted in place. It's come a long way in just a few days. So next week, struts, brakes, cooling system, gear linkage. Find out what's going on with a little random wire and plugs that are missing off it, but yeah. We will not be too far away. Alright folks, just to finish off this video, I thought I'd show you all the bits and pieces which have turned up over the last week from eBay and which we're going to be fitting in the next video. I've got this lovely universal catalytic converter because I am going to be nice to the environment and hopefully that will get the car through the MOT on emissions. I've got this really nice universal two inch silencer from every exhaust part which should quieten it down because we're using the race tube I've got this length of two inch steel pipe in case I need it for the exhaust I've got these two straight sections which will allow me to join two inch pipe together should I need it I've got this gasket which is actually for the diplomat I think um, I have got a new Valio radiator for the Astra, very nice, and I was delighted to be able to get hold of a condenser for the air conditioning and it also has the dryer attached which uh, came all the way from Germany for 6 quid, so that should sort of air con out, the only thing I'm waiting for is the expansion valve and I got a set of pre-facelift headlights in really good condition for 12 quid each from a breaker in England, 12 quid postage to get them up here for the GSI because I robbed its headlights for the cab. So really happy about all that, can get cracking next week with the Astra. So uh, before too long you, you should be seeing a video of that rolling out the garage as a 2 litre 16 valve manual. And I also just wanted to mention there's a shop in West Calder called Zena Food Store and if you go up the back it's like a massive hardware store and it's got loads of tools and equipment like nuts and bolts and washers and I'm always picking up little bits and pieces out of there like these wire brushes, Stanley blades, got myself some cheap paint brushes for doing the seam sealer and all that kind of stuff, a magnetic pickup tray long nose pliers, just a cheap set because I don't know where my good ones are set of calipers yeah, I'm always picking up bits and pieces out of there, it's really handy uh, and I don't think a lot of people know that all that stuff's up the back there but they've got paint and everything as well
this is not your house. No. Uh, be destroying the welcome mat as well. Oh, a doggy. Happiness is a cat on an electric blanket. Oh, it's a hard life, Bob, isn't it? You're happy now you've got your blanket back on for winter.